In light of the COVID-19 crisis, we're hearing that certain gas companies are not willing to send their personnel into a medical facility. What it means is that the facility which was depending on those personnel to change their cylinders now is going to be expected to do it themselves. Well, you may have never done that because, of course, you didn't have to. It's not a difficult thing to do. What we'd like to do, though, is show you how to do it Moreover, how to do it safely. There are a few things you need to be aware of. We're going to go ahead and use this little demonstration rig behind me. It's not complete. As you see, there are only, there's only one cylinder per side. We're not going to have all the elements that you might have on your own manifold, but we'll be able to demonstrate all the key elements of how to handle cylinders and how to change cylinders on your manifold. The first question is, how will you know if your manifold needs changed? Well, chances are, if your facility is complying with the standards, it will have an alarm. And the alarm will tell you that the manifold has changed over, that reserve is in use, a number of different designations are used, but essentially, you will probably have seen this alarm many times over the years. It's probably the most common alarm in every medical gas system. Quite a normal thing to happen. Okay, so your alarm went off. You've gone downstairs to change your manifold, to change your cylinders. First thing you're going to need is a key because all manifold rooms are required to be locked. Second thing, notice the signage on the door. It's important that you realize that manifold rooms can be confined spaces and you should never walk into a manifold room without airing it out first. Five minutes is probably enough but it's important that you open the door, let the air exchange before you walk in. When you go down to look at your manifold, what might you see? Well, here on our demonstration unit, you can look on the left-hand side and see the contents of the left-hand bank. You can look in the right-hand gauge and see the contents of the right-hand bank. Quite typical to see the left-hand bank is much lower than the right-hand bank. Then, of course, the center gauge tells you the pressure going to the pipeline upstairs. 50 to 55 PSI is quite normal for an oxygen manifold. For a nitrogen manifold, you might see something more like 160 PSI. Nitrous oxide, air, also typically 50 to 55 PSI. So we're quite normal, as you see the manifold looks right now. We've set our manifold to running, and you can see gauge on the left-hand side is falling low as the cylinder is exhausted. As soon as the cylinder runs out of gas, the manifold switches over and you get that changeover lamp. So essentially you know now that the manifold has changed over. It's now feeding from the right hand side and the left hand side is empty. Notice the little red light telling you that it's empty and the green light showing 
that the right hand side is feeding the system. So what we know is that the left hand side needs to be changed and the right hand side is in good condition. And we know that by looking at the gauges on the manifold. So now if we move over and we look at the empty side of the manifold, we can see the cylinder valve connected through the pigtail to the cylinder manifold itself. The cylinder valve is where we're going to concentrate our attention because what we're going to do now is we're going to manage that valve. We want to reach over and we want to turn off that cylinder valve. It will be a clockwise to off, counterclockwise to open. Once we have the valve closed off, now any residual gas still in the cylinder won't come out when we detach the pigtail. So the process for removing a cylinder is making sure that we have turned the cylinder off, close the cylinder valve, that's clockwise to close, counterclockwise to open. We want to make sure we're good and tight on a clockwise motion. Then we have the cylinder turned off. Then we want to release the pigtail here at the cylinder valve connection. To do that, we're going to need a tool. Here's an adjustable wrench version. Some people will have a fixed version, which is not movable, but either will do fine. All we want to do is we want to apply that, make sure it's good and tight, and then slowly release the threads. We don't want to do this too quickly, because if we do it too quickly, we can actually have residual pressure here in the pigtail, and this pigtail can fly around and hurt someone. So we want to do this slowly. At some point, if there is any residual pressure, we may hear a hissing, and that will be a release of the pressure that's residual in that pigtail. Now you can hear that there. And then, of course, once there's no residual pressure, we can normally remove it by hand. Before we move the cylinder, somewhere in our mechanical room we should have a valve cap. We never want to move cylinders without valve caps in place. So you want to find this valve cap or something like it in your manifold room and you want to go ahead and make sure before you move a cylinder you put that valve cap in place. That valve cap is there to protect the valve should the cylinder fall over, the valve will not get sheared off, and the cylinder turned into a rocket. You may not have noticed previously, but all cylinders are chained or restrained in some way to make sure that they don't fall over. Again, this goes back to making sure that we can't shear that valve off and turn this cylinder into a rocket. You may have a cable, you may have a chain, either way is fine. We just want to make sure that we remove the restraint before we attempt to move the cylinder. Moving a cylinder takes a little technique. They're obviously big, they're obviously very heavy. You can't lift them, so you have to use a little technique to move them in and out of position. What you do is you lean the cylinder over so that we can use the base as a wheel. 
What you don't want to do is lean it too far because then the weight comes onto your arms. So we just want to lean it a little bit, just enough so that we get it onto one point at the base. Then we can roll the cylinder like so. We have a bit of a problem here. How do we know if this cylinder is full or empty or half full? Your facility may have a tag system. Typical tag system has three parts to the tag. When it's full, the tag is complete. When you put it into use, you tear off the full and it says in use. When you go to change the empty cylinder, you pull off the in use and it says empty. A good way to run your cylinders use a tag system. But we don't have a tag. Doesn't mean that it's not important. We need to have a way to mark the cylinder so that we know that it's empty. Very simple way to do that. We talked earlier about how you can move a cylinder by tilting and rolling. That's fine for short distances. For instance, when we want to maneuver the cylinder into position at our manifold, that technique works fine. But we don't want to move a cylinder long distances that way. They're very heavy, they're very awkward. So we want to make sure we always move them any distance with a cylinder cart. Cylinder cart is essentially a hand truck for cylinders. Here's a two-cylinder version. You can see that there's space to put two cylinders on here. There are single-cylinder versions available as well. The chances are very good you have one of these in your manifold room. If you don't, it's essential that you get one. You really can't move these cylinders without them. This particular unit has a metal bar. In order to be able to get the cylinders on here, we need to remove that metal bar, get that out of the way. Then we're going to go ahead and, just like a hand truck, put the cylinder cart up against the cylinder, push it forward so that we can get underneath, and then pull the cylinder toward us, and then just roll it into position. It takes a bit of experience to get good at these, and if you're not practiced with them, you may find it easier to do with two people. Once the cylinder's in position, We'll go ahead and we'll put the restraint in place. It's not essential that we get it all that tight, but it is essential that the cylinder not be able to roll back when we pull the cart back. With this, you can see that I can easily maneuver the cylinder into position or anywhere I need to go.
So now we'll bring our new full cylinder into the manifold room. We're going to go ahead and bring it roughly into position. Then we'll go ahead and remove it from the cylinder cart. And the process is very much the reverse of what we did to load the cylinder cart. We're going to push the cylinder, roll it off the cart, just back and forth, rolling it out of the way. Then we can get the cart and put it away. So our cylinder is in place. We've got it as close as we can. Number one, we want to check the label. We did this before, we're gonna do it again. Make sure that the label on the cylinder matches the manifold. We wanna put nitrogen on nitrogen, oxygen on oxygen. We wanna make sure we're always making the gas, the correct gas between here and here. Once we've assured that, now we want to go ahead and remove the cylinder cap. Sometimes these cylinder caps can be very tight and hard to remove. If you find one that's very hard to get off, you can take the end of your wrench usually, just put it inside that hole a little bit, and use that to help you break free that cylinder cap. And take off the cylinder cap. Remember, keep it. We're going to need it later. Now we want to make sure that the gas coming out of here is clean. There could be dirt and debris in the inside of this valve, so we want to make sure that we just get a little bit of gas to blast that free. We don't need very much. We're just going to crack the valve just a little bit to blow out anything that might be in there. We can then go ahead and make our cylinder connection. This one's quite easy. You can see this is a flexible pigtail, very easy to maneuver into position, very easy to make the connection. But by regulation, we are not permitted to use these flexible pigtails on any oxidizing gas. For oxidizing gases, we need to use rigid copper pigtails. These are subject to ignition. These are not. So we need to make sure that any oxidizing gas, we're using rigid pigtails. These are a great deal more difficult to use because with this one, it's easy to maneuver it into position. With this one, we've got to adjust the cylinder. It can get quite awkward to make sure that we can make that connection. Nevertheless, it's important that we do that. Now notice one other thing. This is an oxygen pigtail. This is a nitrogen pigtail. Notice that the connections on the end are very different. That's intentional. These are gas-specific connections so that we can't connect an oxygen cylinder to a nitrogen manifold or a nitrogen cylinder to an oxygen manifold. So that's a second level of protection to make sure we can't make a mistake. Label, connection. We're gonna go ahead then and make our pigtail connection. And remember, all cylinders need to be restrained, so we need to make sure we chain that cylinder up to keep it from falling over.
Now we can go ahead and with our wrench, we can complete tightening that connection. We don't need to bear down. We don't need it to be very tight. We just need it to be snug. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pressurize this side of the manifold. Of course, we're only going to do this once we have all the cylinders in place. Very, very important. We don't throw this valve open. We crack this valve. So we open it very, very slowly. Allow the cylinder to fill slowly. And when it reaches full pressure, then we can go ahead and open the valve completely. This valve is never used. It's sometimes there for service. There are some reasons that you might need to use it, but in the standard cylinder change procedure, there's never any need to do anything with this valve. You might just want to make sure that it's completely open. So now we just go ahead and check the manifold, make sure everything's as it should be. Left hand side is ready and in service. We're down a little bit on that side. We'll be out here to change it soon. Right hand side is ready, but not serving. Our red light has gone out. We have full cylinders and pressure to the facility is normal. So all's well and our cylinder changing operation is complete.